Jörn Matzlin from BBC News. Uh, could you uh, talk, talk a little bit about uh, the fiat entry into the US market and uh, how quickly could it become more than just a small niche player? And second, secondary, uh, what's, what sort of wisdom lies behind this uh, rebadging of, of models from Chrysler and Fiat? Uh, don't you think you run a risk of devaluing both brands rather than enhancing them? And which product are you talking about rebadging? Sorry? You're not, doing, you're not doing any rebadging at all? No, I think that we've merged one brand. We've merged the Chrysler and Lancia brand into one brand in Europe. It's not a rebadged strategy. It's really a unification of, uh, of the brands for European distribution because of the fact that in Europe, Lancia has got, a better, has got better traction in the marketplace than Chrysler would. And so I think they have, at least in terms of origins, a significant amount of common DNA which needs to be exploited on the international scale. There's one product on this on the stand here that is going to be rebadged as a Fiat, and that's the that's the Dodge Journey because I think we've made the decision that the Dodge brand has got limited limited international expansion opportunities that we need to use the other brands within the system to try and get these products out, and these are very product specific initiatives. They're not rebadging exercises, and and I. Um, and so some of the negative negativity associated with the way in, w in which you pitched it is not necessarily relevant. I, the, the other question about the Fiat, the Fiat brand, we're, we're re-entering this market after an absence of 27 years. I think it's 28 years this year. But um, The Fiat 500 is coming in with some relatively humble expectations. We're entering the A segment. It's not the largest market segment in the United States or Canada for that matter. Um, the car does represent, I think, in a very iconic way, all the elements of Italian styling and what Fiat has historically accumulated as a brand over 100 years of worth of history. And I think that we're going to experiment our presence here in the U.S. We expect that total volumes will be about 60,000 when the, when the product um, sort of reaches peak volumes between 60 and 65,000. There will be other versions of the Zioco that will be available in 2012 and 2013, including convertibles and the sports version through the Abarth brand. So all these things are being introduced, and we're really doing it to want to establish the, the 500 as a permanent mainstay in the product lineup, but also in terms of what other traction the Fiat brand could get out of the United States. And so one of the things that will in all likelihood come, and hopefully within 2012, is the European version of a minivan, which is you know, it just in terms of relative size and compared to what you see here on the stand with the town and country and the caravan is dwarfed by the size of the American equivalent. <clears throat> but it does represent the European version of such a vehicle, and I think we're going to start experimenting with Fiat in that sense, hopefully on the basis of a very strong performance of the Fiat 500. Lisa Guyton from 13 ABC in Toledo, and since you won't discuss any future lines in Toledo, can we talk about the existing lines? We've heard for years that the Nitro uh, would be finished in production. Obviously, it's continued on. That plant, as you know, is probably one of the most uh, efficient and modern and productive plants in your fleet. Uh, it's underutilized, operating on one shift at this point. That's the Toledo North Assembly Plant. No, no, Can you talk about what the, the products that are in there now, since you won't talk about what, what could come in there in the future? Look, I mean, I, I, I think that I'm going to make some broad statements and then I'll, I'll drag Toledo into this discussion. I, we, we made a very clear commitment to develop um, on one architecture that we've imported over from Europe and that we've developed in particular for the European market. A, a series of cars that go anywhere from passenger vehicles to SUVs and which encompass the CND segments. Uh, the Toledo plant is an integral part of the manufacturing strategy associated with the implementation of that architecture. And so although we made a recent decision to extend the Nitro be beyond its sort of natural or unnatural life, whatever you want to call it, depending on how you deem the success of that product to have been historically, which is at, at least in part doubtful. But um, I think that we need to rebuild off the Nitro story. We do need to re-enter these segments in a more forceful way with an architecture that supports the volume ambitions that we've got. And I think the Toledo... Um, together with a couple of other plants in the United States, it's going to play a, a key role in the deployment of that architecture going forward. So I, you know, I would, it is my sincere hope and ambition to try and get more than one shift out of Toledo in a relatively short period of time, if that's any comfort to you. But I prefer to sort of leave the unveiling of this thing at the right time. So the 
the nitro will continue on in some form. So it, it will, well, the DEN nitro, that particular model will continue beyond what was originally expected, but it needs to be replaced with a viable vehicle and not necessarily out of the Dodge brand. When do you ex expect to retool the Liberty and the nitro? Uh, we're working our buns off to try and get that done as quickly as we can because we realize that it's probably the most the most significant hole in our product portfolio, um, just in terms of competitiveness. So um, we're working, we're taking models now through clinics to try and get consumer reactions. I think we got the last numbers that I saw. We got about three quarters of the car right. Unfortunately, we sell 100% of a car, and we need to fix the remaining quarter before we get into anything like looks like an engineering process. So we're there. Give us about 30 days. I think we'll have a much better view. Grace Macaluso, the Windsor Star. Mr. Marchione, I have two questions. The first one is, are <coughs> you committed to two minivans after the current generation of minivans? Um, <laughs> you, got a, you got an easier question? Um, that's a very difficult question. I, I think that you're going to see, you, you're going to see you will have a presence as two people move our vehicles. They may not necessarily what you refer to as being um, duplicates of the minivan structure from one brand to the other. I think that we, re we recognize that it's been a very difficult management process for us to try and run, run, run two nameplates of the same architecture in the same showroom with the same dealers. We've now, I think, learned how to ma manage that intelligently. But if I told you that it was an easy process, I'd be lying. So we need to be able to drive a wider um, a, a wider difference in the two product lineups, and I think that, that the next architecture will allow us to get that done. Are you looking at possibly something like a mini minivan? As We're toying with a mini minivan, um, but it may be, uh, there may be other solutions that go beyond the mini minivan solution. It's on the table. We understand it. The great thing about this is that this architecture and the investment that we've made today in the minivan ar in the mi minivan. Uh, platform will allow us to run this product for a sufficiently long period of time with the investment decision that needs to be made in Windsor um, can be framed with all the proper marketing considerations. So I think we're taking our time to try and understand this issue better before we commit any significant capital to the development of the architecture. That's much more important than just you know being quick off the gates here and getting it wrong. And I hope you don't mind me making